Hello guys and welcome back. So we continue with uh, adding lecturers here. So we already added one lecturer, so we have to find a way to display that lecturer on our page. So we already have a way to display uh, users as we can see here. So we're going to use this format here to simplify things. So back here, um, let's go to the controller so that we can read from the database. Okay. And also if I go to my database here, uh, this is a uh, school DB. Yes. So let's go to class lecturers and let's see what information we have here. So the user ID, so we'll get that user and, uh, Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's a little bit of a problem here we have because in this table, we just have the user ID, we have the class ID, and we have the, mm -hmm, the school ID. Now, on our, on this one, this requires a user's role in order to display its data. So the data we have in this table is insufficient to display uh, because it doesn't have first name, for example, last name, etc., etc. gender, it doesn't have that. So we just need to use the user ID to grab the user that we want and uh, that should be it. So what I'm going to do here is let's go to our controller here and let's see. Maybe if I try to illustrate what I'm talking about. So classes, mm, not classes, but a uh, single class. That's the controller we're looking for. So here on uh, lecturer add, okay, so we forget all about this. And uh, this row is for the particular class but we need another row for lecturers so this one should happen not on this but on a different scale so we're going to put another if statement here to handle that situation and also depending on what we are doing this data may change so what we will do is copy all of this information so that we can add this data one by one on certain times and other times we may not need this data. So I'm going to set this to a, a variable called data because it's not being used above there. So we'll do something like this. Okay, so I will get this row here, put it in there. Oops, what have I done? What have I done? cut and paste in there and then move this to the other side but this should be an equal sign of course and something like this this way we can add uh, several items to this array so i'm going to copy this and do the same all the way here paste and do that yes and then let's close this one with a closing bracket delete that and move that over there so i just want to organize them a little bit better so they're easier to read and let's change these uh, commas to semicolons as well like so okay great then here we just need to add data and remove this one like so okay so in this case we shouldn't see that anything is broken everything should work fine and it does all right so now it means we can add data any kind of data that we want even in these if statements depending on the situation and it will be carried over to our system okay so let's put another if statement here this time if this is equal to lecturer add that's when we do that but then let's put an else statement here 
to catch everything else apart from what's at the top there like this okay so just display content however the tab uh, the default is this one so I guess we will always have one that's like this so maybe instead of an else let's put an else if so I'm going to copy this and I will put that here and this one is just lecturer like this without any of this here like so okay display lecturers here uh -huh. okay so we will need one of these data points like so and say lecturers like that okay and we need to read from the database to create this variable right there so we're going to do exactly what we did on these guys uh, query just like this or uh, set insert mm -hmm. okay so what we really need is because we have the class uh, user, the class URL here, or the class ID in this case, we're going to read all lecturers that have uh, all users in here that have the class ID that we are looking for. So we will use the where clause to figure this out. So I'm going to say lecturers is equal to. Uh, wait a minute where did we create the class classes where did we create the other class okay lecturers model so we have to move this lecturers model outside here because it seems we need it uh, whether or not we are in this so let me move that over here like so and then I'll get that one. Lecturer's model. Lecturer's model. Yes. And right here, I'll use it and say something like uh, where. Mm -hmm. So where class ID will be equal to the given id and this id is this one right here which is the class id that's the same one we are using to read to know what class we are in at the moment and where are we doing that from uh, yes classes model there we go and we are using that id so we're doing this the same thing here. We're not getting only one. So that's why we're using the where instead of the first. So we're getting all the matching values. And then we set that to here. So once we are at this point, um, we should have a variable called lecturer in our view. So let's go to the view and that single class view, single class view right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, but we want to go into the lecturers, that's class tab lecturers. So class tab lecturers right here. And at this point, after the nav bar, I just want to do a show like this, just so we know we have something returned. So back here, I will refresh and we have a syntax error. So on line 67, it says unexpected function or constant, unexpected variable data. Now, usually with uh, an error like this, it means the previous line is the one with the problem. That's why this line is unexpected. So there's a character missing on the previous line. So line 67, it means uh, line 66 probably has a problem. So this is line 67, 66. So what we are missing here is the open bracket, like so. Okay, so that should solve the problem. Refresh, and there we go. So it's saying undefined variable 
lecturers. Hmm. Why is that? Let's <clears throat> excuse me. Let's see what the tab name is. And the default is lecturers. So I forgot that S right here. Okay, good. So now if I refresh and you see we are getting uh, one of these, which is good. And in each one of these, there is actually a user role, which is awesome. Because now we can use this user role to get what we want. But we also have the lecturer role here, which tells us which class this lecturer belongs to, or the school, and also the class ID in this case whether this one is disabled or not and when they joined this class and their user id which is the same as this one right here okay so in the user we have this role that we need cool so what we want to do now is loop through the results and uh, add a table yeah pretty simple so let's add a table here so table for it to look good we need to add a few bootstrap classes and the first one is table of course let's add table hover so that uh, when we hover on it it reacts and let's add a table striped so that we have lines uh, different colors per line so that we can easily see which line is which and let's add a table one row and let's add a table header headers here actually no we don't actually need this sorry about this uh, i forgot that we are going to be using the other view so what we want to use is the view from the user thingy so we're going to say php tag and say uh include like so so we'll say include uh, views path and then let's add the user like so and let's close that like that so this is what we're going to need now for this to work we need to look through our results so let's just say if um, let's put our php tags there i say if is a set oh, i think it will be set uh, let's ask if it's an array if is array lecturers because we know it will always be set so we don't need to ask if it is set and let me change this to an end if like so and close that now once we know that this is valid if we try to load this is going to cause an error because the items we want are not there we need to do a for each loop here let's say for each lecturers as um, lecturers as lecturer without an s like so and then it's end for each like that now this will still cause an error because we don't have the required variable so let's see what variable it's looking for so it's looking for image gender etc etc so hmm so all these things are undefined but it's not telling me what the the actual variable name is so to check that out we just need to go to our user include.php and see what it's expecting so it's expecting a row like this so let's give it that so I'm just going to say row is equal to lecturer user. Copy lecturer like this, because we know that uh, the user in here is what contains the information we want. So we are setting it to row. But keep in mind, this is not PHP. So since we are just putting PHP stuff here, I might as well just add PHP tags and remove this here and remove that and then close those tags here like this okay 
So at this point, we've given it raw what it's looking for. So it's going to find it when it tries to use it. So refresh, and there we go. So we have a super admin here. Now, is this the lecture we added? No, I think we added Mr. Vibe, did we? Let's see, class lecturers. This should have been Mr. Vibe, and this is the wrong lecturer. So let's see where the problem is. Uh, yeah, this is weird. So let me just truncate this. I'll go to operations just so I can delete everything in this table. Truncate. Okay. And then I'll come back and let's refresh. So we have nothing. Uh, let's add a lecturer. I want to add Mr. Vibe search and select. But then we get a different user at this point. So obviously we have an error going on here, but not to worry. Uh, error solving is a lot of fun. So we're going to solve that error in the next video.